The Apex Club from Rainier Arms brings you this episode of the QA. It is the end of the month, which means it is time for the QA. However, the savvy viewer out there is probably looking at this, especially the post date going, wait a minute, it's the first. And you're right. I am not only a few days late and a few dollars short, but uh, it is just what it is. But this is the May episode of the QA for Guns and Tactics. If you aren't checking us out online, please do so. Gunsandtactics.com. We have articles, content, cool stuff, all things guns and tactics related. Also, make sure to follow us on our social media platforms as well. And of course, to get your questions on the show, send us an email, theqa at gunsandtactics.com. I'll put that email address right there on the screen. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes out of your day checking this out. My name is Dave Tim. I do appreciate you watching. And yeah, I know that I'm a few days late. Uh, the month kind of got mixed up and then with the holiday and everything else. So this is the May edition, even though it's coming out probably June 1st is uh, when I'm shooting this and when I hope to have it uploaded. So I do apologize. And uh, yeah, it's been a busy, busy month. Like I think there was uh, that family video. It's like May, Sep May, Sep May, September, or May, May, December. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, that's like the Holderness family, kind of family-friendly, fun content. Anyways, we have five questions, so not a ton of questions, but that's all right. We're gonna bang right through them here. Let's get rocking and rolling. This first one is from Taylor. I uh, won't be able to make it to a class again this summer, and that's all right because we're not doing a whole lot of classes uh, on my training side, which is a separate company. Uh, we're kind of taking a sabbatical, if you will, and we're kind of enjoying. Stuff that we wanted to do ourselves as students to you know, continue to learn. I'm a firm believer that if you're gonna be any sort of a teacher, you have to be a lifelong student and there was only so much time that we had. So uh, Taylor, I do appreciate the comment, but yeah, uh, we're not gonna be doing a whole lot for training. I mean, we're training on our own. We're going to other people and we're shooting matches and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, thank you again for that education. It was great to have you. Uh, about suppressors, looking to get a 30 cal can, primarily shoot on ARs, but would go on everything. What have you found that's best uh, just any gas blocks buffer also the helix looks good uh, you know I don't have a ton of time behind the helix I've never shot one I haven't really got to check one out other than at a trade show so I don't have a ton of input on the OSX OSS helix however what I really enjoy is I have the dead air Sandman series I have a K an S and an L I like them that much and generally I run them on everything I run them on my 30 cal bolt guns my 30 cal ARs I run them on my AR uh, 15s uh, let me mute that here. Sorry, gotta love security systems. Uh, but I generally like them a lot. It's it's a great system. You can get the different muzzle devices for all your different platforms, but I really do like that. Now, what I personally have done is I have the Sandman K with the 5.56 front cap, so I know that the really short guy is basically just, you know, for ARs only, AR-15s only, and then the Sandman S and L, I keep those with the 30 cal front cap so I can put them on everything because obviously you wanna make sure you don't put the smaller front cap on anything like that. Now as far as adjustment, an AR will uh, have more back pressure with a suppressor on it because it increases the dwell time, if you will. It doesn't, I mean, I can go on and on about this, but yes, if you wanted to, you could adjust some things. You could look at a suppressed uh, type bolt carrier group that has a little valve that bleeds off. Those actually work pretty good, the good quality ones. You could look at adding an adjustable gas block like the Seekins uh, adjustable gas block with the lever is something that I've been using and really liking that. I'll probably do a video on that this summer. It's way overdue, but I, I like that system. That works pretty good. So that's what I would do. Or you can just leave it stock and you can do the Gas Buster charging handle mod, which I'll put a card up here, I did do a YouTube video on that. If you are watching this on a different platform, just search for charging handle mod on our webpage and you can find that. But basically it's where you kind of make a gasket layer so you have less gas in your face. So hope hope that helps. All right, number two is from John. This is a long, holy cow. Uh, he's basically having, I'm not kidding you, it's like, that's his question right here. So it's a lot of question. Uh, the gun is still overgassed. He basically replaced everything. He replaced the barrel, he replaced uh, the gas block, he's upgraded to a buffer, and there's still way too much gas in my face. So the same thing might apply to you. Maybe check out that Gas Buster charging handle. It could be your upper receiver. If the upper receiver is out of spec, I don't know what quality or brand it is, but if the upper receiver is out of spec, uh, and I don't know if you've replaced the bolt carrier or not, I think you did the gas key, but 
yeah, you did do the gas rings and everything like that. So the gun was still over gassed. So if it's still over gassed and you know, you're feeling that it could be the upper receiver itself. It might not just be sealed up if you will. So it has a place for gas to go. I mean, the AR is a high gas pressure system. There's several, several thousand pounds per square inch of energy coming through that gas tube and into the carrier. And if you're feeling that it could be upper. So the best thing I would do is maybe swap uppers with a friend throw their upper on your lower and see if you still feel that. And if so, it might be time to replace the upper receiver, or you could look at again, that charging handle mod, which is the same video mentioned there. So just some options. You've replaced pretty much everything else. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the gas port because you replaced the barrel and you did a gas block. So that's probably where I would look is what's left. Uh, upper receiver, maybe the bolt carrier, or maybe the charging handle. And if there's some out of spec stuff in there, you could be feeling some stuff there. So that's what I would kind of look at for John. All right, this question is for number three. Uh, number three is from Winters. I'm not sure if that's your real name or an alias. You watched the video about zeroing a red dot sight on a pistol, just got uh, his 320X5 zeroed, and now he realizes that when he uses the red dot sight, I can feel the dot moving around a lot. I just wanna know how I should eliminate that. You know, actually I have a super simple solution. So what he's talking about is that when you have a red dot mounted handgun, which a red dot mounted on handgun, which I don't have one handy, but anyways, uh, and he's holding it, he can see the dot move. And I can tell you that the gun's moving the exact same amount as it was with you with iron sights. It's just the dot makes it easier to see. When we're focused on that front sight, we don't focus on the target, we're focused on that front sight so we don't see as much movement, but now we add the dot, we're focused on the target, and we have the dot on that same focal plane. Any little movement, we see. And that's like a complaint amongst new shooters with the red dots. How do you get it to stop moving? Or why is it moving so much? It's moving the exact same amount it was. The only way to get better is practice. You can work on some strength things for forearm, grip strengths, whatever, but the reality is just practice. Uh, I used to do, when I used to shoot bullseye, which is like one-handed shooting, I used to just hold a dumbbell, like a five pound dumbbell, and I would just hold it up, and I would have a laser pointer taped to the dumbbell, and then I would try to keep that laser pointer on my target on the wall as steady as I could, and I was kind of just building muscle holding that. You can do something similar if you wanted to, just to kind of get some exercise that way, but it's moving the exact same amount, okay? So I, practice is the only thing. I'm hopefully gonna do some videos this summer on kind of red dot 101 lessons that I've learned of shooting a red dot the last couple of years because it's one of those things that I just didn't want to pump out videos on and be like, oh, I'm such an expert, but uh, I, I don't think that's fair to do when I've only had, you know, not much time. Well, now I've got several, probably, over 10,000 rounds on various red dot guns. And uh, I feel pretty comfortable with the platform in general, kind of learned what I didn't know and kind of learned some tricks. So maybe we'll do some videos on that. So we have uh, two questions left before we do that. We're gonna give a shout out to this month's sponsor, which again is Rainier Arms. News flash, spoiler alert, next month it's actually gonna be somebody else. We uh, are growing the segment a little bit and we had another company step forward and wanted to sponsor the show. So next month, look for something new, but this month, Thanks again to our friends at Rainier Arms and the Apex Club. And if you like buying cool gun gear and stuff from Rainier Arms, which carries all the coolest, newest stuff, you need to check out the Apex Club. For a low price of just under 100 bucks, you get free ground shipping, plus exclusive early access and discount on all of the stuff that they carry. Not only are they known for high-end AR, but now they're carrying precision rifle, optics, lights, high-end handguns and even starting to get into shotguns and of course they have some tools and cool swag stuff too. All of the cool stuff from Rainier Arms. Free ground shipping, exclusive availability on the cool new stuff and a discount on everything you order. It's like your primetime membership at your favorite warehouse exclusive members only combined but the goodness of the Apex Club from Rainier Arms. Make sure you check them out. Thanks again for sponsoring and they are giving away the Avalanche Mod 2 charging handle which is awesome. Uh, I would show it to you but it's actually not in the box because I have this one on my own three gun rifle, which I did a first look video. I'll see if I can put a card up there. But you, the lucky winner, gets a brand new one sealed. And yes, I actually have two. It's not, not the magic of Hollywood. All right, here we go. Number four. Uh, Dave, some kind words. Watch your videos. Thank you, Chris. And he wants to upgrade screws on his 1022. Can you please suggest a replacement for those screws? Uh, truth be told, they're probably not bad. I'm not sure what you have now, but the 1022 uses a V-block. Uh, there's a little dovetail or a wedge cut on the barrel, and then there's this V-block that sandwiches it in. There's two screws, and they're kind of a goofy thread pitch. I want to say they're like 
1224 or 1230 something it's kind of a it's not a super common so you're probably not going to go to the hardware store and find those but i believe volkortsen makes one otherwise you can look at like macast macast car macaster car something like that i can't remember the uh fastenal might have some good quality ones too but um Magast's it's a machine supply i can't remember the name offhand but uh look for an american made uh screw like uh holochrome is an american made one but otherwise uh check out uh dip products diversified innovative products they carry a lot of rimfire stuff volkortsen carries a lot of cool high-end rimfire stuff so that's where i would kind of search to for if you're looking for aftermarket screws and uh, you can kind of see what options they have. And they have all sorts of tricked out gear for your 1022. But the reality is, don't put a ton of torque. Uh, some of the receivers are aluminum, and I've seen those screws strip out. I've had a few of them in the shop where people have really over torqued those and that, or cross threaded them or whatever. So we have to kind of go in and clean those threads up. And uh, sometimes it's a pain. So yeah, you can look at those. That's where I would send you. Last is from Randy. I know there is good and bad in all guns, but what's your opinion on the 770 Remington rifles and 300 Win Mag? I traded for one and I reload for it. It shoots great. I love my Savage rifles too. I own three Savages. The 770 is not a bad gun. It's a budget gun. Remington came out with the 770 to have a lower priced alternative to their 700 series. So their 700 series is kind of like their, you know, flagship line, if you will, of bolt action guns. And then they have the 40X, which is like their custom high end. Well, the 770 was kind of meant to be more of an entry level, but it's still not a bad gun. And if it shoots well, that's all that matters. If you're happy with it, that's fine. Uh, do they have issues like every gun? Well, of course, every gun has issues. And did they cut some corners to make it a little more streamlined, to make it a little bit more economic? Yes, they did. And there's, there's not as much upgradability as like the 700. Yep, that's true. There's not as many accessories for it, such as triggers or stocks. Actually, stocks you can still find a decent amount of, but as far as other stuff, there's not as much. But the reality is, if it shoots great and you can hit minute of animal at whatever distance you are hunting it with, I'm assuming you're hunting with it with a 300 win, then just rock on, man. Just have fun, reload for it, find a load and a pattern you know that it, or it patterns well with, and uh, rock on, you'll be just fine. So now it is time to give away our prize. Again, thanks to Rainier Arms for giving away this Avalanche Mod 2 charging handle, which this is just an awesome charging handle. So we didn't have a ton of questions. Of course, to see your question make the show, you need to leave a comment with the hashtag the QA, which would be awesome so we can help find it. Otherwise, the best way is to email us at the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. So let's uh, pick a number between one and five. Come on, generate. And it is... Number five, number five, and that would be Randy. So Randy, you left a comment. I don't have your email address. Randy, if you're watching this, please send us an email to that same email address and we'll make arrangements to get you your charging handle for an AR. So that will do it for this episode. Again, we wanna see your questions make the show. Please email us, leave comments. Guys, I'm begging you, please like, share, and subscribe. We need the channel to grow. I know a lot of you who are watching are regular subscribers, but please share on your social media platforms. Tell your gun buddies to subscribe. And as always, we do sincerely appreciate you watching. Thank you very much, and have a great day. I suppose I should probably put a microphone on. Uh, checking head. Yeah, microphone probably help. I have the windows open. You can hear the birds. It's nice. It's finally nice. It's finally summer.